Uh, so in today's tutorial, we're going to be creating a super cool intertwined text effect. But before we get into it, let's have a look at what we're going to be making. And with that being said, let's hop straight into Photoshop where we are going to be starting because that is the easiest way to do this. So inside of Photoshop, I have a 1920 by 1080 canvas. And we're going to start off by creating a text layer. And I'm just going to put problem in here. And I'm just going to change the color of this text to a nice little off white. And this is going to be our like main text. And we can make this pretty big, make it whatever size you need it to be. The reason I'm choosing this font, the Dharma Gothic font, is because it's quite tall and it has a lot of straight lines, which works really well for this effect. So you do kind of have to think about what font you use for this because not everything will look as good. So for our second text, which is going to be what we intertwine with this main text, is going to be whatever word you want. Um, I'm going to do child and I'm just going to put this in all caps. And a font I really like for this effect is Sabbath, which is also on Adobe. Um, just it's a bit of like an outline gothic font, but I just think it looks super cool. It has a lot of cool details, which you can play around with and just create some really interesting results. And then we're just gonna change the color of this text so we can kind of see what we're working with here. And I think a nice little piss yellow faded yellow works really well. I'm just going to make sure that our texts are centered. Now we have these two texts and ideally what we want is to intertwine the child with the letters of the problem. So first of all, I'm going to create smart objects from this. I have a short key, short, I have, I have a shortcut made for that, but you can just right click on the layer and then convert to smart object. So I'm going to click command and then click the little thumbnail of the problem and that'll outline, that'll select all the outline of our problem text. And then I'm just gonna click on the layer mask down here and that'll automatically generate a mask based on the selection we had. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna invert it by clicking on my layer mask and clicking Command I. So that inverts our layer mask. And now we can go ahead and color in what we want to be intertwined. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight the problem just so I can kind of get a, an idea of where we're working with. Um, you can also do it without, it doesn't really matter, it's just however precise you want to be. I'm going to turn the hardness of my brush all the way up and size just whatever smaller areas you'll probably want a smaller brush. And then you're going to want to make sure that you're painting with either black or white because that's how the layer mask works. So black erases and white adds. So we're just going to start painting in areas that we think would look cool for this. There is no science behind this, it's legit just what you think would look cool. Um, to create kind of an intertwined effect. Don't worry too much about being super specific with what you end up coloring in. You can always go in and take away, for example here, that we colored this in, but we don't actually want this. We can go ahead and command click the problem, and then we can select our black color and then just erase this. So you don't have to worry too much because if you make a mistake, you can always save it. The one thing you just want to keep in mind is you want to try and create depth. So have some letters to come in and out in different ways. Like here you can see this is underneath, this is over, but it's the same part of like a ligament. If you're in doubt, you can always delete and go back to it, you know? So don't, don't ever stress too much about it. And honestly, I think that looks pretty good. So now that we have this, we are going to save it. Make sure you have it saved in a folder where you can find it again. And then we're going to hop into After Effects. Once I've dragged it into After Effects, I'm just going to drag the PSD in there. And then I'm going to double click on our composition. And there we go. We have our text in here and we have all the layers that we originally had. The good thing about dragging PSDs into After Effects is let's say we go back into Photoshop and we change the problem text. Let's open our, let's say we change a B to an A hit save, it'll update in here, and then click save in here, and it'll update inside of After Effects. To animate this text, we're gonna use trim paths and the pen tool to animate the text. First, I'm gonna change the color of the stroke so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna change it to a red, and then I'm just gonna follow the path of our letters, and I wanna divide it up into a lot of different shapes, just so we can kinda of get a feel for it and change the width and stroke of every single letter that we have just to make it a bit easier on ourselves. So now you can see we have all the red lines covering all parts of our letters. So now we can go ahead and change the stroke width to fill out our letters. And the good thing about doing it this way is that you don't really have to worry about any of the strokes covering other letters because they all represent like their own part. And you can see areas over here where we have some parts that aren't fully shown. We can go in if we type path, you can find that path, you can click it, and then you can just drag to fit 
to cover all parts of the letters. And you want to make sure that everything is covered, so if something isn't covered, you definitely need to go in and mess with it. Now that we have all our letters covered with a stroke, we can go in and open one of them, and if you go to contents and then click the little add icon down here and click trim paths, this is essentially going to allow us to animate the stroke. So as you can see, if I drag the end, it animates along the path. If we set a keyframe at about 112, so a second and a half, one and a half seconds, and then go all the way back and then drag the end all the way to 0%, you can see that it animates along the path. Now, if you go into your shape and then go into stroke, you can add a taper. If we increase the end length, for example, you can see that it kind of narrows the end down a little bit. And then we can just do end ease and just play with these parameters until you get a look that you want. And as you can see here, as it goes along, it's a pretty smooth animation. But as you can tell also at the end, it's pretty narrow. We are going to keyframe that. When it gets about halfway through, I'm just going to animate the two parameters that we played with. So I'm going to keyframe, go forward to the end, and I'm just going to take these back to zero. Select all your keyframes and hit F9, and that'll just ease them. So if you play back, you have a pretty smooth animation. Now you can go into your keyframe graph and you can change the speeding of it. So let's say we drag this and just create a little bit more of an impactful animation. So if we play back, now we have this. So now that we have our first path animated, what we can go in and do is we can open up our parameters and we can go into our trim paths and simply copy it. And you wanna make sure that the keyframes are also selected. Go back to the first keyframe, highlight all our other layers and paste it. So now everything is animated. We are gonna do something similar with the easing of the ends. So we're gonna open up our stroke and we are gonna open up our taper and then again, select the ones you've keyframed, go to the beginning of where the keyframe is, command C it, and then select all the other layers, search for taper. And then you just wanna select all the tapers by command clicking. And then I'm just gonna click command V and boom. Now everything is animated. And if we play back, super simple so now i'm just going to select all our shape layers shift command c to pre-comp and we're just going to name this mask and we're going to take our child text and we are just going to link the track map to it so now when we play it back now we can go in and play with this more you can just randomize where it is a little bit just to get a bit more of a cooler look just by offsetting the animation you can get some way more interesting results so if you play that back now you can kind of see it just kind of animates in pretty slowly. If this is all you want to do, pretty simple, you know, nothing too crazy, but you can go ahead and spice it up a little bit more. So if I select our two layers, our child and our mask, and I pre-comp them and do text, and then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to rename one half turn. And I'm just going to place it below. And then on my text layer, which reveals the actual text, I'm just going to drag a few frames forward so now we have one animation coming in and then another one right after you can't really tell but if i change the fill of this you can see that we have one layer and then the other layer comes slightly afterwards i want to link this to a half tone texture you can either make your own or you can get one from texture labs like i have so i'm going to use this this texture from texture labs since it's already a transparent background just makes it super easy you can make your own an illustrator or whatever and then I'm just going to use, I'm going to take the half tone and I'm just going to link it to the Texture Labs texture. And as you can see, that creates some half tones on the first layer. Then I'm also going to add a tablet displace and I'm just going to set the amount to 8 and the size to 8. And then I'm going to open the evolution options or click the stopwatch and add a time times 5. And that just gives us a little bit more animation and the texture if you play it back you can see it just animates just a tiny bit and one thing you can also do is change the color of it so i'm just going to add a fill and let's just do a maybe a dark green like that last but not least a fan favorite or well one of my favorites is a pressurized time so if we go and play that back now we have that and that's how you can create an intertwined text effect super easy way to spice up a little bit of text and overlaying text in interesting ways just to create you know a bit of depth and um, a little bit more of a unique look i hope you're gonna create a lot of stuff using this technique because it's so easy anyways that was pretty much it for this tutorial today we went over how to create some intertwined text some halftone patterns and using trim paths to animate text technique you can use for a bunch of different stuff really it's not just text animations and we're actually going to be doing something with trim paths again next week so um 
stay tuned for that. I appreciate you for watching along and I'd appreciate it even more if you liked, commented or just had a really good day. So yeah, thank you and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.